So you guys already know what happened, right? Half asleep in my chair. I wake up. I'm like, well, you know, I think it's time that I uh go to bed instead of this chair. I have a bed right over there. Why would I why would I fall asleep in a chair? But instead of that, I'm like, yeah, let, it is technically Wednesday, you know, what's you know, there's no new and I'm like, mother <laughs> Am I not allowed to sleep? Is that just, is that what this is? Is I, it, 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 at least I got a nice shirt on, you know, a nice color. Let me know in the comment section below. What, what, what color is this? Actually, I don't even know. I just, it's like a burgundy, I guess, like a red burgundy. And all this is not important because Prophet of the Sun Talia here, arm of the ancient spirit. That looks so much better because I think in the, the preview she had her old arm. And of course we won't be able to see any of the loveliness that are the animations, but hopefully we'll be able to see, uh, you know, what she's bringing to the table. And uh, I have to give you guys my raw reaction to what this girl is bringing. She is the gold fake core. It is the last Thursday of the month. And that means we got gold coming, ladies and gentlemen. So buckle up, get in your seats that you also sleep in from time to time. And without further ado, get them rinky dinky do. Let's get into it. That's right, even though we just came out of the little intro, I still have not clicked this. I, I have no idea. Is there any other thing besides here? Because I really like to put this special, special thing there. Yeah, no, no, nothing. Okay. So, you guys, I swear to God, someone's going to come out of me. And you know what? That's why I showed that. Because if someone's going to be like, oh, well, you didn't look at that either. How come you didn't look at that? Because I fell asleep, okay? There's a high possibility that I might just fall asleep after this. This video might not come up. So, it is 2.37 a.m., okay? So, if this video... <laughs> If this video comes out much later, I didn't make it, guys. God bless my soul. So here we go. I'm going to click onto it, and we can now see the full design. Oh, my God. She looks like almost like poison ivy mixed with like a, like a Native American or something like that. She looks crazy amazing. Definitely would want to see what those colors look like. You know, maybe black mixed with something like, like that. I mean, as I've said multiple times, the dye system is going to make that insane. He is gold. She's not a random blue. Hey, jeez! Even though I know that they're gonna do that eventually, by the way. Uh, oh no, the blue, no, they haven't announced a blue for this one, right? There is no blue for this one yet, but there will be. There will be. <laughs> and I will cry. So here we go, scrolling down. Is there anything in the passives? I see something. So, oh, okay. We have already, we have already achieved newness. Uh, Guardian of Prophecy increases defense of all allies by 20%. So, AoE defense buff. Wow. So, that's already... It, that's not a biggie for other people, but that's more of a biggie for me because you guys know I like the tanky, tanky, tanky. Overtime effect, which means as long as she's alive, everyone will have increased defense, which also means that everyone that's been going all red is now going to be rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> for just going HP because now you have a character that's just gonna give you defense anyway. So people like me who just awaken Mahar defense is gonna, let's not talk about that. That is still pretty cool. It's just extra defense for no reason and free stats in a game, especially in gacha games, when you get free stats, you know, sky's the limit with that. So that's nothing bad or anything like that. Dimension leave you already know. So we're gonna scroll down, overtuned fate, and then, uh, oh, there's something else after that, but let's go one at a time because I'm a dick. Uh, hey, if I can't sleep, neither can you, fuck you. <laughs> Two times around, weird. Uh, when an ally is damaged and their health falls below 30%, heals the health of one ally with the most missing health by 60% of the target's max health. So, Two times per round, so this is going to happen twice when an ally is damaged. So, and if her health falls below 30%, so pretty much that would mean you know, two times when someone gets low on HP, the person with the lowest missing health. So, that's very important to note because obviously that's going to have a lot of synergy with Tranquil. Uh, we don't know who, how, he. 
course that's gonna need some testing 100% because I already gave you the scenario you get hit by tranquil now with signature force as you guys know after tranquil proc hits then signature force would hit and then you die does this trigger before signature force and you get hit pick into tranquil and out of the one times per round get healed back to your uh, HP and then after that will signature force proc I'm assuming not but uh, a lot of the times any defensive ke mechanisms uh, mechanic and blah blah, blah gizms, usually trigger beforehand that's why you know sometimes uh you know block will trigger before you know final blow or something like that like that so it could help with that we don't know I'm assuming not but that's still pretty good, especially when you are in the higher leagues and your characters are pretty beefcake. And the fact with the whole defense thing is if you do survive that first hit and then like the signature force brings you to your tranquil instead of the other way around, then you will be full healed or not full healed, sorry. You'll be giving a fat stack of a heal and it will be very similar to like pretty much giving everyone, you know, FC Rarest pass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got low, all of a sudden you you got a lot of HP back. And again, this is going to help out with any of the characters that are just, you know, more tanky. And I and it's very strange that, you know, they did all this stuff to prevent, you know, matches stalling on for longer. And then, yeah, here we go. <laughs> so, again, that's going to happen twice per round, and which is pretty funny. So, and, and you know, she's still going to have her first aid. Is that still here? No. But, well, it's here, but it's cut off, you know. Well, you know, copy and pasting is definitely a difficult job. It's not on everyone's resume, but you know, some people, some people gotta do it. This is definitely first aid, but it's cut off. So this first aid still is gonna proc through. So this is like a third heal that's gonna happen, which is kind of crazy. So a lot of healing coming out and she's just there, just there. So there's something else here and that's going to be rewind. When the health of an ally marked with reversion fuck is that <laughs> reversion falls below 50% health falls below 50% heals the target by 30% of the target's max health and removes all reversion marks this seems like one of her skills that we're going to go down to is going to give them this mark which is different you know usually the marks are put in the passive but I guess we I guess the game's being just as much of a dick as I am they're like yo you gotta keep rolling gotta keep scrolling down you'll get marked by reversion so let's see if this skill gives reversion it might be a little bit easier um to figure that out with reversion so we already know what this skill is absolute prophecy it's when the you know it's a single before it was a single target hit that healed as long as it hit keep that in mind so this one if you hit one person affects afflicts all enemies except the target with prophecy of decline mark if a target marked with prophecy of decline attacks you reduce the damage received by 50 percent so I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm assuming you, as in just Talia. So, which is pretty cool. So you would go and attack the target with uh, the least amount of threat to you, so that everyone else except the person that you hit uh, does not do damage to you. So this is like pretty much attack the tank, which is a smart thing to do anyway. Uh, you know, especially she's not going to be killing anyone of a high value or anything like that. So you attack a tank. And then everyone else is going to have a difficult time dealing with you. And as you can see here, which is pretty disgusting, is that there's no time frame for this whatsoever. So this is, seems like a really good opening move. You just attack someone and then, you know, they just, everyone else can't do anything to you. So I really like that. The heal still stays the same. Well, you know, quote unquote the same. It, it's probably increased. I don't have regular Talia in front of me, but it probably increased. And this is the standard thing that heal does. Takes the debuffs and damage over time for the target that's actually healed. So that's pretty good and as you guys know unleash potential this will be even further uh do even more damage based off her hp no other thing here is scaling off hp so it is what it is and again let's hopefully this gives us reversion there it is so the reversion comes with the with the bigger skill and this is going to be a mana four burst i think it's before it was a mana three burst now it's mana four and you know the higher the number of the initial the higher initial mana cost is what triggers the signature force i hope you guys know that so even if you burst with 10 it doesn't matter it's still going to be a four signature first S signature first signature force hit that's how they do it just letting you know so this one is going to be the aoe hit it's going to heal 24% of her max HP if it hits anyone as you guys know we've already discussed this I feel like 
I feel like a lot of my like I have this dojo and as long as you guys have been in this dojo you you know certain stuff that we've gone over so if it says uh, if it's the AOE hit as long as one character is hit by the by this move the other stuff happens so that's pretty cool but this is how you get the reversion if the heal targets health is 50% or more it grants reversion so if you were to heal a target that's pretty healthy already that's where you get the reversion and then we come back up to rewind when the health of an allied mark with reversion falls below 50% they are healed by 30% of the max HP and it removes all reversion marks it says well that's actually kind of a little doo-doo again as we just figured out of the last video of fc mahar what this could mean is that it removes all the marks on them so let's say if you just keep healing and healing and healing let's say you have dorka and this character that never goes below 50 percent and we keep healing it do they get multiple vision marks because that would be a really doo-doo if one little jerk that that was above 50 percent health goes below and then they get healed this one time you know from the reversion and it removes everyone's reversion marks would kind of suck uh you know it's still a really good passive but you know it just would just be a little bit crappy but it is still annoying it's very pesky uh because of the simple fact that every time you know you, you can keep putting that on your characters you can keep weakening them with the the s1 and with the s2 you can give him she's really like a really amazing healer she's going to pretty much force anti-healing into some team comps because you know um, which people already run ramji or ramsey whatever you want to call him uh they already kind of run him especially if you have signature force through north on frosty uh but he's gonna become even more uh you know necessary i have to say because this seems like a lot of shenanigans and of this this uh prophecy of the client is a mark so of course you guys already know half of the marks don't work in pve so I cry every time, <laughs> as Tachi would say. But the, the crazy part about this is that, yes, in PvP, it's going to be a nightmare dealing with this stuff because it's just marks. So it's just stuff that you really have no, you know, you really have no, can't remove it, can't be immune to it. It's just stuff that happens. So she's forcing you, if you don't want to, if you don't have Ramji on a, on a team, you're pretty much screwed. And you're, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you honestly going to do when she's healing all these characters? He, as long as she's alive especially you know as long as she's alive she's a providing a defense buff and you guys already saw what mahar like there's really tanky nonsense bullshit shenanigans that she can be pulling off and i've already tried uh, i didn't even mention the fc mahar video but like imagine luke in this mix in this fray and now even giving luke this much power to to have a damage reduction through mahar and then healing through this chick plus dorka like <laughs> Uh, I, I'm obviously talking again about a really, really well-built account, a really well-built Luke might not be able to die because stupid crap like this might make the matches last even longer. And that's only with three characters. That's FC Mahar, FC Talia, and Luke. That's three characters that leaves two open slots for you to do whatever the hell you want with them. Yes, you can run Dorka, maybe run uh, even more defensive power or something like, ugh, ugh. Ugh. But that could just be one tag comp. It could be your main comp, depending on how much investment you have into your tanks. So that is going to be all the, the shenanigans that they decided to put into this game. And I do like that, man. I don't like when the game is purely pure, pure, pure offensive capability. There needs to be defensive capabilities. Yes, I know that it could be stally. And uh, I just got done watching Dreadnought's a video uh, about how, you know, him doing a tag fights they're pretty decently long for per round you know like they're pretty decently long fights but i feel like that's what you want to see in the end game no am i am i losing my mind isn't that what you kind of want to see are these decently drawn out fights with actual strategic stuff once you know people are on a similar level you know so i do think that this character is going to add that that flavor in and the the, the best part about a support or if not tank, is that they have to draw your attention to them. They have to provide some type of, oh my god, kill this thing, it's so fucking annoying. And that's what Talia is. I think that this is a perfect example of a character that is going to be tanky and, and with the S1 is going to force your attention onto her because he's not gonna die. And if this thing works, like I said, it has no turns on it. So what's stopping her? <laughs> Nothing removes uh, the prophecy of decline, just so you guys uh, know. So if you were to hit, let's say, they have five characters, right? So you hit target number one, then everyone else besides that target gets prophecy of decline. Then you're on your next turn, 
why don't you just hit target number five now target number one now has the profit decline amongst everyone else it could rotate you know like so it doesn't stack but what's stopping that from happening i mean the matches usually go quicker than that you know like most characters are dying by that point but it keeps her alive for a pretty uh, a long time especially reduces damage by 50 percent and remember these aoe reversions are going on her as well she's not excluded from that so even if you get her low she's gonna just pop herself right back up she's gonna be a nightmare a night fucking mare to kill she could probably solo uh certain like I, I could I can only like she should technically be able to solo some characters because they won't be able to do enough damage to her and reducing damage would technically should affect signature force as well it's just damage mfo is going to be this character is definitely a must summon uh at least just to test out some of this stuff out i know some people don't want to summon to test stuff they want more guaranteed death of character but i think that this this at least on paper even if the the, the maybes that i added into this video it's still pretty strong i would still say that it is very very strong and you know that's what the golds usually are they must have the only must have non must have gold that they've ever dropped so far that i can remember is going to be fc valentina but she was still a must have if you have frankie especially a well-built one um this one seems like again it's not tied to anything there's nothing that is attached to a general she's like yo bro you just pick me up out the <laughs> out the wrapper and i'm good to go so definitely gonna see a lot of her. There's no way you don't. She's she's stupid. She has way too much healing. She's providing an AOE defense buff. She's gonna add annoying to annoying comps. That's that, that's what she is. She's definitely going to be a mix in the meta in some way, shape, or form. That's MFO. YFO in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think about this character. I've been talking way too much, but you can tell the hype is there. Uh, so we're gonna get her, and then there's a lot of testing that I want to do. You guys know that's that's the best part you know the cool part about testing stuff is that it doesn't matter how buff or non-buff my account is i can test it out you guys already know the drill like comment subscribe and i shall see you guys in the next video don't don't you next video is when she comes out you guys already know we need the character first so you already know what the next exos video is going to be just remember that every day at the cash you know it's your lucky day and i'll see you guys in the next video peace